We know that time we washed away We bounce back to the shore We know we lead the way Keeping odds at bay See the sunrise tomorrow Inspire the world to follow okay so we are going to start uh, the special machine topic of our electrical machines curriculum and uh, in today's lecture i will first going to cover switch reluctance motor okay so that is my first target to cover the switch reluctance motor okay so lecture number 1 on switch reluctance motor so this is a pictorial representation of switch reluctance motor okay so if you see here the stator is only wound with some coil but there is no coil or magnet on the rotor so this is the special features of switch reluctance motor and this switch reluctance type of motor is basically a this is basically a synchronous machine this is basically a synchronous machine in which it has a wound fill coil as in the stator poles so there is wound fill coil in stator poles but there is no coils or magnet in rotor okay so this is the special features of switch reluctance motor so this switch reluctance motor we can say is basically a electric motor in which the torque is produced by the tendency of its rotor the torque is produced by tendency of its rotor to move to a position where the reluctance to the flux path is minimum that means inductance is is maximum so this is the switch reluctance motor the torque is produced by the tendency of its rotor to move to a position rotor try to achieve the minimum reluctance position so in short we can say the rotor try to achieve minimum reluctance path so this is switch reluctance motor okay so reluctance motor is an electric motor torque is produced by the tendency of its movable part to move to a position where the reluctance 
or the inductance of the excited winding is maximum or reluctance is minimum. So, this is a kind of synchronous machine and there is no coil and magnet in its rotor. It can be seen that both the stator rotor have salient poles. So, this is salient pole structure. This is important. So, this is salient pole structure. Hence, the machine is doubly salient, single excited machine. So, SRM is doubly salient singly excited machine doubly salient singly excited machine okay and stator winding on diametrically opposite poles are connected in series or in parallel to form one phase of the motor diametrically opposite diametrically opposite in series or in parallel to form the poles of the stator. There are several combinations like 6 by 4, that means 6 stator fold, 4 rotor fold, 8 by 4, 10 by 6, etc. So, here we have shown 6 by 4, 8 by 6 poles. This is also 6 by 4 configuration. Okay. So, now let me discuss the working principle of working principle of SRM okay, switch reluctance motor working principle. So, so this is the figure. This is the figure where there is no excitation is happening. Okay, so if you see here. If you see here, the diametrically opposite, diametrically opposite poles are energized at a time as a pair. Okay, two diametrically opposite. Okay, so this will be A1, A2, B1, B2, C2. C1. So, out of this 6 stator pole, two diametrically opposite pole are energized at a time as a pair. For example, if A1 is energized to become north pole at any instant, the polarity of A2 will be south. Suppose this is energized, so suppose this is forming the north pole, so this, this will form the south pole. And the salient poles of the rotor becomes aligned to the stator pole pair that are energized. So, rotor will align which this salient pole rotor will align to the rotor pole's pole pair that are energized. So, it will align along with the energized stator pole pair. In a magnetic circuit, the rotating part prefers to come to the minimum reluctance position at the instant of excitation. This is the basic nature. Okay. So, we should keep that in mind. The basic nature of magnetic circuit to achieve the minimum reluctance path. So, minimum reluctance path. So, that the maximum flux cutting can happen at the instant of excitation okay now while the two opposite rotor poles get aligned to the two stator pole that are being energized at that instant another set of rotor pole become out of alignment with respect to a different set of stator poles so this is the most important thing so what is the rotor is trying it is trying to achieve the minimum reluctance path. And while two opposite rotor poles get aligned to the two stator poles that are being energized at that instant, suppose A1, A2 energized and there is R1, R2, R3, R4. There is R1, R2, R3, R4. So, 
if it is energized so suppose b1 b2 energized so r3 r4 align align in the axis to the axis of b1 b2 but look r1 r2 r1 r2 that is the another set of rotor poles become out of alignment with the respect to a different set of stator pole then the next set of stator pole pair is excited to bring the rotor into the next alignment position so this this r1 r2 is out of alignment so what will happen c1 c2 will energized that is the next stator pole pair is excited to bring the rotor into the next alignment position for example in the figure of this so let me talk about this figure first okay so this is the figure when the stator pole pair a1 a2 energize the rotor pole pair r1 r2 become aligned along the axis a1 a2 so this is my r1 this is my r2 and a1 a2 energized so r1 r2 aligned along the axis of a1 a2 but the other pole pair that is r3 r4 so this is r3 this is r4 become out of alignment with respect to the other stator pole pair so if you consider b b dash c c dash so if you see this r3 r4 is out of alignment okay so once this has occurred the poles a1 a2 are de-energized so if this has happened so what is my next will occur a1 a2 de-energized will de-energized okay is de-energized and the next pair of stator poles that is b1 b2 is energized okay so now b1 b2 energized so now a1 a2 unexcited condition unexcited and b1 b2 energized okay so the rotor will now be a position along the stator pole b1 b2 so look r3 r4 r3 r4 is along this axis b1 b2 axis since the rotor pole spare r3 r4 is closer to the axis b1 b2 as compared to the other rotor pole pair r1 r2 the new alignment position is in between the rotor poles pair r3 r4 and the stator pole pair b1 b2 okay so so r3 r4 align across the b1 b2 because it is it was closer than r1 r2 pole pair the rotor thus moves clockwise the rotor thus moves clockwise sorry the rotor thus moves anti clockwise uh, yes i have drawn it so the rotor thus moves in anti clockwise direction by one step as the excitation in the stator is moved from a1 a2 to b1 b2 so previously it was in a1 a2 now as the excitation move from a1 a2 to b1 b2 the rotor move a uh, one step so this is basically a kind of stepper motor okay now comparing the rotor not stepper motor but the logic behind this is similar kind of okay a variable reluctant stepper motors to, to be specifically specifically uh, say okay so comparing the rotor position between uh, this figure this figure and this previous one okay it can be seen that the rotor rotates by a steep angle of 30 degree so if you look previously r1 r2 was 
along the axis of a1 a2 now it has moved a 30 degree anti clockwise as the stator switching sequence is moved from a1 a2 to b1 b2 this sequence continue through c1 c2 then again a1 a2 and so on so next step this b1 b2 is also de-energized and c1 c2 energized so it will again move by 30 degree and this sequence will repeat it okay every time a new pair of stator pole is energized the rotor moves accordingly in order to align either on its two pole pair to attain minimum reluctance position and in this way by switching the supply to the stator pole so what i am doing i am changing the excitation of the supply switching sequence i am changing by switching the supply of the stator pole in a proper sequence the rotor can be made to rotate continuously in desired director direction and such a sequence of excitation that can be applied to the three stator pole pair of the motor shown in figure this so so when this a1 a2 energized so this is the sequence then in next step b1 b2 energized so this is the sequence and then next step c1 c2 energized and this is go on repeating if the switching action is fast enough the step by step movement of the rotor will appear to be continuous rotation in the desired direction so if we able to switch this sequence a1 a2 b1 b2 b c1 c2 very fast so we have to switch switch sequence very fast to get continuous rotation to get continuous rotation okay so that i have to done now such a simple sequence of excitation can however sometimes be found to be unstable during operation so what i will do or rather what is the logic behind to improve this so that no unstable operation occur in this simple sequence by modified the sequence so what is that modified sequence so this is my second modified sequence okay firstly the stator pole pair a1 a2 energized so now the sequence i will change so first a1 a2 energized okay then without switching of a1 a2 simultaneously b1 b2 energized b1 b2 energized this pulls the rotor poles to be aligned at a position midway between the axis a1 a2 and b1 b2 so this is the axis of this is the axis of a1 a2 and this is the axis of b1 b2 so the rotor will align in between this position so r1 r2 align in this midway position which i have shown in this figure okay so what happened now what happened the rotor move 30 degree in clockwise position previously it was r1 r2 it was aligned with a1 a2 but now if you look it was moved 30 degree in clockwise direction okay next the stator pole pair a1 a2 is switched off but the pair b1 b2 is kept energized so that the poles r1 r2 get aligned with b1 b2 so i will then switch off a1 a2 but b1 b2 will energize so r1 r2 will align the along the axis of b1 b2 operating the motor with such a sequence is more stable this sequence continues through in this fashion b c c c a a a b and so on so first a b then b c 
then C energized only, then C A A A B in this sequence before a full rotation has occurred. Such a sequence of excitation that can be applied to the three stator pole pair of the motor is shown in this figure. So, this is the switching sequence for this new switching to prevent the unstable operation. So, if you see here, first A, then AB, then B, BC, C, CA and so on. With the movement of the rotor, the production of torque and power involved switching of currents into stator binding and variation of reluctance and such a variable speed motor is known as switch reluctance motor. Since both stator and rotor have salient poles, I have mentioned this is called doubly salient machine. So, this is an example of doubly salient machine because stator and rotor both are both are both have saliency. Okay. Now, what is the advantage and disadvantages of this switch reluctance motor? Okay, so advantage is, so what is the advantage? So advantage, advantage is efficiency is very high. First, more power per unit weight and volume. More power per unit weight and volume very robust as there is no coil in rotor so it is very robust through this srm drive four quadrant operation is possible four quadrant operation is possible that is motoring and regenerative braking both in forward and reverse direction both in forward and reverse direction however the drawback of this is Okay, noisy and not well suited for smooth torque production. Now, what are the different application area of this SRM? So, what are the different application area of SRM? So, this is basically used in industrial drives like traction, traction, domestic appliances like food processor food processor vacuum cleaner srm is used you should keep it in mind vacuum cleaner so this is important vacuum cleaner we use switch reluctance motor washing machines washing machine washing machines this is also very important you should keep this two example in mind so this is all about switch reluctance motor okay now so this is the typical classifications of srm rotary srms linear SRMs okay and then radial field axial field single stack multi stack okay so this is linear SRM found its application in marketplace like catering to machine tool servers okay so this is all about switch reluctance motor so after uh, switch reluctance motor now we are going to discuss brushless dc motors bldc 
okay uh, this is this bldc motor is uh, this is a specific class of this is basically a ac synchronous motor this is basically a ac synchronous motor okay and in this ac synchronous motor semiconductor is used this is semiconductor is used for the purpose of control stator current control stator current okay so this is a ac synchronous motor where semiconductor is used semiconductor switches like thyristor igbt mosfet to control the stator current so what is the necessity of controlling the stator current so that the rotating torque is available so that so that rotating torque is produced to rotate the rotor without use of brass and commutator without use of brass and commutator which we have seen in case of dc machines okay in dc machines brass and commutator segment is responsible for this rotating torque now uh, as we are using this semiconductor switches so we are basically doing solid state switching so we are doing solid state switching this can be done by transistor or we also can use thyristor now to trigger this thyristor how this thyristor is triggered now this thyristor is triggered by the rotor position sensor so there is a there is a, in this feedback path there is a rotor position sensor rotor position sensor and this rotor position sensor is connected to a electronic control and gate drive circuit electronic control electronic control and gate drive circuit gate drive circuit and this is this is is the input to the scr gate so scr this is connected to thyristor gate terminal so that we can control the firing angle okay so that, that is how the brass and commutator arrangement as in conventional dc motor is by replaced fully electronic processes in this method each phase of stator winding is energized sequentially by a power transistor or thyristor so so this uh, the stator winding is energized sequentially stator winding winding energized sequentially by this solid state switches that is power transistor or thyristor 
and there is a control circuit and that signal of the control circuit I have mentioned the signal of the control circuit is come from the rotor position sensor which is connected to the rotor of the motor because of rotor position feedback guided triggering the stator and rotor field always remain in synchronism as the frequency of triggering automatically adjusts itself to the motor speed so that is the most important point that because of the rotor position feedback so this is there is a rotor position sensor which is connected to the motor and this is giving the feedback signal which guiding the triggering of the thyristor or transistor so that stator and rotor field always remain in synchronism so the stator and rotor field always remain synchronism okay so this is important aspects of this bldc always remain in synchronism because the frequency of the triggering automatically adjust itself to the motor speed so there is a sensor connected it will see the speed and automatically it will trigger automatically adjust so that frequency remain the same the length of on time of the thyristor in one cycle determines the motor torque magnitude so this is another important point you have to keep that mind that the on period of the thyristor the on period on period of thyristor determine the magnitude of motor torque okay so we have to keep that in mind and this bldc motor is expensive than same rating conventional dc motor but it has certain advantage first as here we have used the electronic control so the response time is very fast so the first is response time is very fast because of the use of electronic control okay and second is this motor can operate in very high speed in the range of 50,000 rpm which is not possible in conventional DC motor since at higher speed there is no chance of brass and commutator damage because this is brassless okay and as this brass and commutator is absent so it will reduce the frictional losses so the efficiency is also very high in case of bldc motor because there is no rotational rot losses there is no rotational losses okay as there is no brass and commutator there is no risk of sparking fire explosion or electromagnetic radio frequency radiation so that is the another advantage no sparking no fire no sparking no fire because brass and commutator is absent okay and another as there is no mechanical commutator and brass so it is require less maintenance so maintenance cost is also very less okay so these are the advantages of that bldc motor now i have shown the schematics of this is the this is the schematics of bldc motor along with its drive system okay now the stator has three phase winding which is star connected 
okay the stator winding are supplied through a variable voltage csi so this is csi current source inverter so the supply is the stator winding supplied from this csi this is a variable voltage csi in such a sequence that they produce a rotating magnetic field around the air gap the rotor in the bldc motor is of salient pole permanent magnet type so this is also important rotor is salient pole permanent magnet type okay so as shown in this csi free wheeling diodes are connected so free wheeling diode are connected across each scr or rather we can say mosfet or scr whatever is to protect them from the high value of ldidt so that's why the free wheeling diode is also used in this csi okay which is going to be commutated okay so this is the commonly concept of common concept of brushless dc machine one important thing we should uh, remember that commonly used rotor position sensor are hall effect sensor hall effect sensor are used as rotor position sensor also optical sensor consisting of leds and phototransistor is also used optical sensor with leds and phototransistor also use as this rotor position sensor so this bldc motor finds its application is in record player you should remember this in record player it finds its application in record player okay small fans for cooling electronic equipment which we use in case of in laptop computer hard disk drive computer hard disk drive so you should keep this two in mind record player and computer hard disk drive okay and this is all about switch reluctance motor and brushless dc machines okay so these are the few reference books which you can follow apart from online resources also you can go through oxford publication electrical machine by pithiraj purkait so you can use sir books also okay thank you